Thank you so much, Lene. It's uh, really my pleasure to be speaking with you today. I'd like to thank all of you who are attending. There are so many webinar offerings and choices nowadays. It's um, it's uh, there's a lot going on, and I really appreciate your presence. Um, I'm going to give you a kind of a formal presentation. My talk will be in three parts. In the first, I will explore the experience of migration, <laughs> including child migration in some detail. I should add that at Delphi, I've been doing a, I've been a volunteer on an asylum process for nearly 20 years. And uh, currently I have a number of our students engaged in asylum evaluation processes. So I'm actively working in this area. In the second part, I will offer some clinical thoughts on trauma and migration and mention some of the clinicians who have influenced my thinking. And finally, I will seek to link these ideas to some questions about child precarity and child subject formation. In her book, Border, Karpa Kasabova states, these ghosts, men, women, children, walked along rural roads between the border towns of Europe with plastic bags and eyes that locals didn't want to look into for fear of seeing all the world's trouble. And while they waited for their papers to be processed, their past lives lay behind them in ruins. But they couldn't afford to mourn because of a more, more pressing problem. Their new lives couldn't begin. And that's from her book, Border, A Journey to the Edge of Europe. A migrant toddler's body washes up on the beach at Budrun in Turkey. A father and a daughter drown together in the Rio Grande. The Trump administration in the U.S. separated families and locked children in cages. In Manus Island and on Christmas Island, persons seeking asylum in Australia have stitched their lips shut in silent protest at their inhumane and indefinite incarceration in a place legally called non-Australia. The first section of my talk is called Refugee and Asylum Status as a State of Exception. Existing outside of established governmental systems, refugees have no recognizable being and are apparently not worthy of protection. The situation is further compounded for children because they have no legal or political rights in any sovereign state. Giorgio Agamben's notion of bare life and state of exception have, has been adopted widely by many critical writers in refugee studies because of Agamben's capacity to offer a political explanation for the way in which ostensibly progressive, humanitarian, and democratic countries create conditions of abjection for persons who are refugees or asylum seekers. Agimben's singular contribution is to tie an analysis of the existential condition of the suffering and indeed disposable refugee to the workings of sovereign power. Agimben thereby questions individual liberty as a foundational assumption of Western democracy. A system that permits citizens to benefit from its freedoms only because it can invoke autocratic powers of extrajudicial regulation to control and manage its others. 